What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are with another reaction video and this one we have Come and See for Yourself. FM Nirmala Sitharaman, hope I said that right, slams Western perception on India. I'm excited to jump in. Before we do, however, if you guys would like to support the channel by becoming a member, all you got to do is hit that little join button down below. Give it a quick little tippy tap. Uh, you receive exclusive benefits that I know you would enjoy. But let's dive into this. India has the second largest Muslim population in the world. And the population is only growing in numbers. Rather than listen to perceptions being built by people who have not even visited on the ground and who produce reports. Every minority has been dwindling in its number, or if I may use the word which is harsher, decimated in Pakistan. Mm. I agree. Okay. Another place though where perceptions are very different in Europe, if not the US from India, is on politics. There is widespread reporting in the Western press about uh, MPs from the opposition party losing status, about Muslim minorities in India being subjected to violence. I'm not going to ask you to deny or comment or rebut. What I would ask is, are these perceptions affecting in any way your sense of investment in India or capital flows, or has this not been an issue? I would think the answer for that lies with those investors who are coming to India, mm -hmm. and they have mm. been coming. And uh, as somebody who's interested in receiving investments, I would only say, come have a look at what's happening in India. Exactly. Rather than listen to perceptions being built by people who have not even visited on the ground. <laughs> Crazy. And who produce reports. Again, you know. <laughs> it's insane. How could you write? These perceptions are being created by people who haven't even stepped foot into India, who haven't even visited, yet they know all of this about India, yet they have this entire perception of India, and their perception is correct, even though they hadn't been there. She's saying, hey, if you want to know uh, if you should invest in India, look at the people who have invested. Ask those investors. How about you just come and see for yourself? Come over and see it for yourself. You make the decision for yourself, but don't listen to these people who have never stepped foot here, who, who think they know what India is like, but have no clue what India is truly like. Don't listen to their perceptions because they have no clue what they're talking about. They have no foot to stand on. The emerging markets do or carry leg this to burden stand on. You are the emerging market. You have every business to ask us or every business to speak about every issue on which you need to play a constructive role, but yet the prescriptions are ours. Mm -hmm. I would want to ask if human, that's not to say or not to even imply that I, I, I accept the uh, perception that you're referring to. India has the second largest Muslim population in the world. And the population is only growing in numbers. Mm -hmm. If there is a perception or if there's in reality, their lives are difficult or made difficult with the support of the state, which is what is implied in most of these write-ups. Mm -hmm. I would ask, will this happen in India in the sense, will the Muslim population be growing than what it was in 1947. As opposed to, let us say, I take the name of the country and therefore the contrast can be sharper, as opposed to Pakistan, which mm -hmm. was formed at the same time. India was divided into two, Pakistan. 
Pakistan declared itself an Islamic country, but however it said, minorities will be protected. Mm. Every minority has been dwindling in its number, or if I may use the word, which is harsher, decimated in Pakistan. Mm. Even mm. some of the Muslim sects have also <laughs> been decimated. Violence prevails against uh, Muhajirs, Shia, and every other group you can name, which is not accepted by the mainstream, I don't know, Sunnis probably. So it, it, it doesn't make sense, right? If there's, if there's this perception that there's this violence against Muslims, there is unfair treatment of these Muslims so much, yet India has the second biggest Muslim population in the world, yet that population is continuously growing. If it was such unfair treatment, such violence, would it still be growing? Wouldn't the numbers start dwindling? As in reference to Pakistan, who has declared itself an Islamic country, yet said minorities were protected, yet numbers of those minorities are dwindling, or she said decimated, it would make sense. I mean, the numbers, man, men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. If, the, if they're continuously growing in India, then, then how does it make sense? These perceptions are, are written by people who have never been to India. These people have no clue what India is truly like. Whereas in India, you would find every strand of Muslim doing their business, their children getting educated, fellowships are being given by the government. And I would want to see where exactly is that one state where. And again, law and order is a very state subject. It's not the government of India subject. Each mm -hmm. province has its elected government. They take care of the law and order in those states. Yes. So across the board in India, if violence is happening to make Muslims get affected, itself is a fallacy as a statement. It cannot be so. Each province and its police are different. They, they are run by the elected governments in those provinces. So that itself tells you how these reports have no clue of the law and order systems in India. To say it's all the blame of government of India, I would want to say, then tell me, between 2014 and today, has the population dwindled? Has the deaths been disproportionately high in any one particular <laughs> community? So mm. I would rather invite these people who write these reports to come to India. Yes. I host them. I host them. Let them come and let them travel alone in India and prove their point. Yep. Yep. Pre oh, I love that. I love that so much, right? You got all these things to say? Okay, I invite you to come. Check out. Talk to these citizens in person. Don't go off a couple of complaints. Let's talk to a number of them. And let, let, let's hear what the overwhelming message is. Because those reports you're getting are false perceptions. You've never been here. How can you know what it's like over here? You can't. I freaking love that. Yes. Uh, shout out to FM Nirmala Sitharaman. I hope I said that right again. Uh, let me know how you guys feel about what she said. I know y'all got to, I, I assume you got to feel the same way, right? And I'm in complete agreement, right? Uh, if you've never tried anything, you can't say it's bad. When it comes to, if I've never tried a certain type of food, how can I say it's bad? I've never tried it. If I've never been to somewhere, how can I already have this perception in my head? If I've, I, or how can I believe this perception if I've never truly been? You can't. You have to step foot into that country. You have to taste that food to know for yourself and stop going off false perceptions that people create uh, to probably uh, further an agenda. That's all we have for this video. Let me know what you guys think if you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, check out the next video. See you guys next time.